We've officially entered the rainy season here in Tokyo, Japan. So I'm kind of forced to work inside and make videos inside. Hopefully we'll get a clear night maybe during the next month or so, but we'll see. Fingers crossed, right? But let me take advantage of that to uh, give you some ideas about some lessons that I've learned about cheap Newtonians for astrophotography and how you can make them work better. And some of those lessons, they were given to me by some comments on my videos and they're not like obvious or they're not advertised a lot. They're not, I didn't really hear about them before seeing them in my comments. So thank you so much everyone who chipped in to give me some advice about how to tune this telescope. Now this particular telescope is the Skywatcher Quattro 150P. It came with a focal reducer slash coma corrector in the box and cost me 450 US dollars. It came with a terrible focuser that I still have installed. I haven't replaced it yet. Some samples of the same telescope come with a better focuser, but we haven't been able to determine what the pattern is. Some people in Europe have the better focuser, some people in Europe have the terrible focuser. Is there no rhyme or reason to it? Is it the lottery? I have no idea, but Skywatcher, that's bad practice. Be clear about how the telescope is delivered. But anyway, it's a cheap, affordable budget Newtonian and it's quickly growing on me. I'm really liking this Newt now that I have optimized it. I've also replaced some parts of the Newtonian and I've uh, shown that in a previous video. I'll put some link above. I've replaced the spider that holds the secondary mirror in place and I've also added a mask on top of the primary mirror to hide the three mirror clips. Uh, that way we get better star shapes. And those additions for this particular model uh, they cost 200 uh, euro. Again, I'll put like some links in the description so you can check like the official specifications, etc. So what is difficult with this particular Newtonian? Well, natively it is an F4 Newtonian. So it's already registers as a fast astro astrograph. F4 is quite fast and it starts to be really demanding on having precise collimation to get the best star shapes out of your scope. In addition, because I'm using this telescope with an APS-C size sensor, which is a relatively large type of sensor compared to cheaper, more budget cameras like the SI533MC Pro that has a one inch sensor, the camera makes demands of the whole system that are more than with a smaller sensor because then you're imaging, you're getting light, grabbing light onto the sensor further away from the center of the optical lines effectively. And yet, despite being demanding, at least on my sample, the mechanics that Skywatcher delivered with the telescope that allow us to adjust all of the settings of the telescopes were pretty much crap. But there are ways to make this better even without the uh, investment that I did in the additional spider and the primary mirror mask. This telescope is similar to something like the Quattro 200P. There's also, I think, the 250P from Skywatcher. There's tons of variants from, I believe, Orion and other makers that are basically rebranded clones or maybe not quite rebranded clones, but they're very similar to one another. And so those tips can apply to a lot of those similar models. Now, my first tip would be if you don't like being frustrated, if you like you know, being able to do your collimation in a few minutes rather than a few hours, is to, at least for the initial collimation, instead of using uh, what I was using in my previous videos, like a collimation cap uh, to center the secondary mirror under the focuser tube and uh, a Cheshire eyepiece to then further collimate the optics. Get yourself a webcam to put into the focuser draw tube. Then you can use some software like free software like SharpCap to draw concentric circles that can be aligned to the focuser draw tube and then to the secondary mirror and then to the reflection of the primary mirror inside. There is also a paying solution which is I, which I have featured on the channel which is the Ocal Electronic collimator. Uh, this is basically just like a webcam but with a slightly more precision, adjustable focus, that kind of stuff. It makes things really easy to work with and it looks like this little red thing here on, upon which I can put an adapter to then put into the draw tube, 
right? So this is an electronic collimator. And I'm putting on the screen how it looks like when you have it into the draw tube of a decently collimated telescope, which is the one that I have here. You have the green circle that is aligned with the main focuser tube. The red circle is then aligned with the secondary mirror. And the final circle is aligned with the reflection of the primary mirror onto the secondary. And they're all concentric to one another, which means that I have decently good collimation there. And honestly, with the Ocal collimator, it took me five minutes from scratch, having removed the secondary mirror and put it back on right afterwards, just five minutes to complete my collimation. Whereas my initial collimation with the uh, Cheshire eyepiece and collimation cap took me three hours. Now, it could take me much less long now, but the big advantage of having a computer screen that you can look at while you do the, the, the settings is because there are so many ways your secondary mirror can shift around. You have one setting that determines how deep inside the tube the secondary mirror goes, and you want to make sure that it is right in front of the uh, draw tube. There is another setting, which is how does the secondary mirror rotate? You want to make sure that it's rotated towards the draw tube, towards the camera sensor. And there's a third setting really, that's the whole tilt adjustments via the collimation screws on the secondary mirror to really make sure that we have like a, a straight optical path to the uh, center of your camera sensor. And getting all three of them right, especially when you use the collimation screw, you'll actually screw up the, the uh, actual rotation of your mirror a little bit so you need to readjust it's like it's a nightmare um, at least with this uh, newtonian telescope if you need to each time you do a setting to check your collimation cap then to check your cheshire eyepiece then do another setting etc 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 obviously it's going to take a long time if you have it in front of you on a computer screen so much easier and faster i mean seriously when i started my series on this Newtonian, I was saying I want to stay as budget as possible. I don't want to buy anything I don't need to buy. So I'm not going to use the Ocal collimator that I have already shown on the channel. But no, I am. I am. Seriously. If you buy anything from this telescope, even more than the spider and the uh, mirror mask that I featured in a previous video, it's this, this, this collimator, or maybe a webcam, even a simple webcam. But this is like more uh, out of the box, one touch and then it just works. Uh, the Ocal, Ocal Collimator company, they have also uh, published a great video about how to do the collimation of your Newtonian telescope. It's really like, uh, you need to rewatch it multiple times to really understand it. it and it has the most unique background mu music uh, on it. Like just for the background music, you need to have a watch. I'll put link above and also in the description. Also, of course, link to the collimator in the description as well. But honestly, it's a great way to get like at least decent collimation on your telescope. And then if you want to be even more precise, you can get something like a cat's eye collimator, except that I honestly looked at the cat's eye collimator website after getting so many comments recommending it to me. And I had absolutely no idea what I should be getting. It was like, and I didn't, I didn't spend the time to figure out what I needed. It's just too complex. And I, I immediately gave up. Right now, I get good star shapes across the field of view. So I'm good. I'm not going to mess with the collimation any more than that. But I will say something else. The collimation at first, I was not able to get something as beautiful as I showed earlier uh, with the Ocal collimator. It's like the primary mirror reflection within the secondary mirror could not be properly centered without like the secondary mirror being offset. It was a mess. I could not get those two decently aligned together. It would work, but I knew it was not ideal. And I was like, pulling and tearing my hair out until I realized it was because the collimation of the focuser itself was wrong, meaning the focuser was not 90 degrees to the telescope tube and that explained everything. So if you're having trouble with collimation and this is the second piece of maybe not so obvious advice, you need to collimate your focuser so that it is square to your telescope tube. And the way that you can collimate your focuser to the actual tube, so it's like kind of like 90 degrees and everything can be nice and well aligned, is there are, at least for this model, three sets of collimation screws across the focuser. They're both a push-pull kind of system. So one screw will be able to pull towards you, whether the whereas the other one, the push screw, which is the worm in this particular uh, example, can be 
can push and so lock everything in place. So the way you can do is you want to work one set of screws at a time. And one way to determine whether your focuser is actually square to your telescope tube, and so that will make the collimation easier, is to simply use a bubble level. So you put your mount and telescope, I prefer to do it like that rather than on the table because then I can simply adjust the position on the mount until I have a perfect level on the actual uh, focuser. And here you can see I have it, I have a bubble level on top. And at the same time, I will want to use the spider inside the telescope so I can have an example exactly like here where the spider bubble level is perfectly in the center while at the same time my other bubble level on the top here is also at the center. And of course I want to be able, ideally I'd be using like the same bubble level so that any flaws that we have with your bubble level, mines are super cheap, will be reflected and you want to make sure that it is level in all directions. So I try to like switch the angles like a couple of times and double check that everything is always aligned. And in this case they're both pretty well aligned, they're actually not perfect, but they're good enough. It was much, much worse before I started messing with the uh, collimation of the focuser. So this is another thing where I wish Skywatcher had proper squareness of the focuser to the telescope tube from the get-go, but it's not the case. And for me, once I did this manipulation, suddenly collimation become, became easier and everything was more or less centered well. Still not perfect, but we're getting there. If you wanted to have like, you know, a beautiful image with your primary mirror uh, reflected perfectly in the center of the secondary, the secondary being like perfectly beautiful really round, in your and and in line with the focuser draw tube and everything absolutely 100 perfect well you would need the primary mirror to be perfectly centered you'd need the secondary mirror to be perfectly centered you'd need everything to work perfectly even though those are settings you cannot change that's not going to happen so you're never going to get anything perfect there as long as you have the entire primary re mirror reflected in the secondary mirror that is more or less in the center of the secondary mirror and that the secondary mirror looks more or less round and that last one is i believe the least important at least from my point of view and everything is aligned well together everything is good another trick that is important with at least this model of the telescope and maybe its bigger brothers and smaller brothers as well is involves how you're going to do the collimation of the primary mirror at the back. Because if you notice, the coma corrector uh, that comes with the scope is actually super long. It looks like this. It is this part from here to there, that's the length of the coma corrector. And when it is in best focus, the coma corrector actually sticks into the telescope a little bit. Now it doesn't stick enough to go into the light path, but it does stick out in the telescope tube a little bit. The less it sticks out, the more better your chances that it's not going to catch some stray light, cause reflections and cause other kind of issues. How do you make sure that at the point of best focus for your camera, the coma corrector is recessed or actually pushed outside of the tube as much as possible? Simply by making your primary mirror at the back closer to the opening of the tube because then that means your coma corrector will need to be pushed back to get your focus. Assuming of course you have the 55 millimeters distance between the coma corrector and your camera sensor. What this means is that when you do the adjustments for the primary mirror during the collimation, you can use the larger screws here to actually push the mirror as much as possible inside the telescope. and. Uh, you don't want to push them all the way because then adjusting the tilt of the primary mirror becomes difficult. But once it's done, then you have, you'll have a focus point that is more outside of the telescope than otherwise. And so that means the coma corrector is not protruding as much inside the tube as it would if you had like the primary mirror all the way backwards, right? So that's a good thing, although it also means that your focuser draw tube will stick out more from the telescope, which increases the risks of tilt because nothing's perfect in this world. Uh, this may not be an issue with high quality focusers, a high quality focuser this ain't. So it might become an issue in the future, I'll see and I'll let you know. So those are the main three things that I noticed that may not be completely obvious to new Newtonian owners, uh, but I think it's quite important. There's of course other stuff 
and I've covered them in previous videos, so you can go and watch those previous videos, links in the description. On your way there, by the way, if you're not subscribed to the channel, welcome to the channel, click subscribe, click that notification bell, like the video, leave a comment, actually, it helps a lot. Leave a comment, tell us if these are good tips and tricks, or if you would do things differently. And if you're watching the video, check the comments as well, because I can and will be wrong absolutely 100%. So check the comments and judge for yourself whether I'm, what I'm saying makes sense or it's a load of malarkey. And if you want to support me even more, you can join the channel as a Patreon, link in the description. Some of my Patreon ranks get access to my videos early and without ads. Or you can also join the channel as a member. Anyway, the other stuff that you want to do for your telescope is it's best if you have a lens hood. The right length still escapes me. I'm not exactly sure what the perfect lens hood is. Obviously, when you add a lens hood, your telescope becomes more of a sail in the wind. So when you have strong wind night, as I always do in Tokyo, then the lens hood can be a disaster. But at the same time, you want the lens hood to avoid stray light inside your Newtonian. Newtonians are like that. They require babysitting. And as I've done in the previous videos, you want to flock the inside of your telescope to make sure there are no reflective surfaces and you can use black paint. I'll put links in the description with some of the best that there is or flocking paper. Again, links in the description. It's a lot of work, but once it's done, because you've invested so much energy into your darn Newtonian telescope, you'll like end up loving your telescope and wanting to use it. I'm like that. I, I haven't even touched my C6 Hyperstar since I started working on this because it's been so much fun and now that I have all of my sweat, blur, blood and tears uh, spilled onto the primary mirror of this telescope, I want to image with it more than any other setup that I have. I guess that's how it works. Oh, and one more thing, I forgot one last tip. One thing I've mentioned in the previous video already, but that sometimes is not recommended because you could drop something onto your primary mirror, which might shatter it, is when you do the collimation, I found it was so much easier to have the telescope pointed straight upwards because then gravity was helping you in setting the secondary mirror to the right place. And that made an absolutely gigantic difference for me. Obviously, it also means that if you drop your screwdriver, goodbye primary mirror. So be careful if you follow this maybe not so good advice. With that, I hope that this has helped some of you. I wish I had all of that advice in a nice, easy to digest videos when I started working on this newt, but I am so glad that you guys were here for me to help me in the comments, help me on Patreon, help me all over the place to get this thing into working order. And I hope this can help you do that as well. Or, you know, even get the scope, if you have it in working order, to an even better working order, because if it ain't broke, fix it. With that, I hope it's not the rainy season for you guys. I know there are those wildfires in North America. I really hope uh, things get better soon. So good luck with that. Uh, but more important than that, well, maybe not more important, but don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars. And I'll see you next time.